Peace to the saints. Today's lecture, we are discussing manhood and managing your woman, which are actually intimately intertwined. You see, most people don't realize there really is no man without woman. We wouldn't even need the term man or woman unless we had the two opposites. So today we will make a study of manhood and we will make a study of how you manage your woman, which is indeed a lifetime job. I was just recently talking with a saint on a consultation today. I said, women, it's like a game that you never beat. You just get better at it incrementally. And so let us share in that knowledge. Per usual, we will show love to those who show love to us. So please do send in your questions and tuition now as we will address it. And then we will continue on with the lecture. We have Steve said, peace to the saints. Glad you're doing a live again. Haven't joined one in a while, but I'm back and paying what I owe. I also sent you a DM regarding the backpack briefcase. Peace and blessings. Peace to the saints. I'll have to take a look at that. And there may be an investment opportunity. I don't know if I'll take it myself or make it an option for one of the saints to co-invest with Steve on the product that he's building and releasing soon. We have Esteban said, time is our most valuable asset. Once again, thank you for your time. You are very welcome. Thank you for that consideration. We have Stephen Whitney said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And we are going to move over we, to Cash Up and PayPal. We have Ivan Anderson said, peace to the saints. I like to always have a go pair, go to pair of shoes, one white pair and one black pair. For years, it's been white Air Force Ones and black LeBron Everglades. Those are going straight to the trash once these Snow Bunny 4000s and the other custom pair of black Nike shoes, sorry, black shoes from Marquette come in. Nike won't do a damn thing for us, but Marquette has been giving us game to feed us for a lifetime. Show love to those who show love to you. Real talk. Peace to the saints. You dig? I actually got my Snow Bunny 4000s in. I've been wearing them every day for the last couple of days. You're yeah, in. and gotten lots of compliments. Yes, indeed. We have Kenneth said, peace to the saints. Sometimes I get Facebook message or friend requests from people I met time ago, even ex-girlfriend. Just wanted to just wanted to know about how is my life going. Then they just disappear again. Should I keep <clears throat> interacting with these kind of people? Thoughts? No, that's a total waste of time. Number one, women will pop back up in your life uh, if you're making progress. If they see that you're winning, surely uh, women will come back. They're often planning for the long term. It's really in the female's nature. So you should expect them to resurface. However, if they can serve no purpose in your life, then you ought not waste any time dealing with them. So I would not respond. And another piece of advice you'll find that I've given in other videos, which is that as you elevate, you're changing. And in as much as that's the case, you must upgrade your friends. You must upgrade your living accommodations. You must upgrade your network, your business skills. Everything should be on the upward trajectory. It would be foolish to stay the same. And in maintaining old relationships that don't benefit you, you are choosing weakness and idleness and standing still. We have Sherard. He sent $20. He said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. We have Trevin. He said, hey, Marquette, I have a good woman and her sister wants to take her on a trip for both their birthdays. The thing is, her sister is the opposite of her and is the party type of girl. Should I let my girl go? And what should I do in this situation? Or what would you do in this situation? The best thing you can do is to have a woman with whom you are aligned. You share values. You look at the world in a similar way. She is deferential, which is to say she'll ask you what you recommend and she's likely to take your recommendation. You should have a woman that you trust. Number one, you cannot pull her away from her family. That is her sister, her blood. And certainly you cannot part a woman with her friends. I promise you, invariably, she will not let go of those friends. And she will even be inclined over time to be more likely to let go of you. So number one, if she were to ask you, do you mind if I go? Then I would give her your perspective I would make sure I don't degrade her sister because that's her family. And then I would say, do what you think is best. And in her decision, you will learn about her. But remember to keep it player through the whole thing. Because anytime you forbid a woman to do something, you are probably causing her to hold a grudge or to comply, even though inside of her mind, she is in raged and angry and feeling disobedient and she will resent you and talk behind your back so 
tell her your perspective, tell her what you would probably recommend, but hey, you're an adult. It's up to you. See what she does. Vapor Saint Sinek, hey, Cash App, he said, thanks for the Dr. Phil video. Could you answer my DM? I just saw your DM and uh, Bridget will follow up on that item and get that taken care of. Yes. We have Simon said, how can I as a man manage myself better? We'll be discussing that during the context of this lecture. In short, I'll let you know that a man is known by his goals and deeds. Goals, what are you pursuing? Deeds, what are the accomplishments that can be credited to your name? What are the actions you've engaged in? What is your regular behavior? That is how people will understand who you are. How can you stay focused? By having goals and pursuing them. The goals should be exciting. You should be ambitious about accomplishing them, i.e. you should be a serious man. You see, if you're not serious about your goals, it'll be abundantly clear to everyone. You have extra free time. You're idle. You're playing video games. You're excessively masturbating. You're letting women waste your time. So if you're comfortable where you are, carry on. If you're not comfortable and not pleased and you think that you deserve greater things, you better get to it before you step out on the street and get hit by a bus and your life ended where you were in a state of being average, which is to be a loser. So you ought to get to it. I always tell people, hurry up. The world will not stop spinning and hustlers won't stop winning. You dig? So let's get at it. We have Abraham sent a super chat. We have Ricky Webster said props do for all that you do. Marquette, we appreciate you. He says saints. He's very consistent. Yes. We have Kyle Lanzano said, good evening, Marquette. What are your thoughts? A double major in English and mathematics for my college studies. I think English is a waste of time. Mathematics is a fine degree. You can utilize it for many things such as currency speculation, uh, trading, science. There are a multitude of opportunities that will lead you to gainful employment. Conversely, English is a, unless you want to become an English professor and be broke, uh, it's really a waste of time. We have Daniel sent in tuition from Mexico. He's, He's to the saints. Indeed. We have Juwan sent $50. Baller alert. He said, peace to the saints, paying tuition. On another note, you have a quote about money being a slave and you wanting all of your slaves to work hard for you. Mm -hmm. Can you say this again? It's very motivational. Indeed. Every dollar that you have is a slave of yours that should labor on your behalf. And to that end, I'm seeking to create a new habit in all of you. So I'll be waking up very early every day and making sure that I record all of the stock trades that I do each morning, Monday through Friday. The stock exchange is open at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'll be up and doing my trades, and I'll share that with you on marquetism.com or patreon.com slash the saint in the center. If you're a member, you can already see the trades that I've been doing. Now, mind you, this is radically different from a lot of folks who say that they do this and that, yet there's no evidence of their wealth. There's no evidence of their activities. Um, so you'll be able to track that real time. And the goal is to, number one, build new habits in you, to be abreast of the news, to be abreast of the financial news, to be aware of the bleeding edge technologies, the financial opportunities that are arising, and also to build the habit of creating paper assets, i.e. money machines. We have some more super chats, but we have Rudolph just bought the Floral Men's Joggers, the Snow Bunny 4000s which was your whole outfit last night. Playerism, you dig? And when you wear those uh, Snow Bunny 4000s, they're cocaine white, white on white, you dig? And the uh, joggers are beautiful floral, white and gray. You got to wear that with a white t-shirt or like a very light color uh, top. You also got the I Identify sweatshirt. Oh, right? in, in white? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to it. That's an outfit, you dig? We have Dr. Thunder said, working on myself is a lonely affair. My family friends don't oppose my ambitions, but just don't understand it. How do I deal with feeling alone? Number one, you don't have to be alone. That's why we have things like the Sassin, which is really a haven for the intellectually enabled, you dig? A haven for those who are creative and those who are genius and those who are ambitious. Uh, these kind of opportunities are ones you should seize. For example, we have the conference coming up in late April. It is indeed sold out. But that's something that you should have jumped on if you didn't. Uh, those are the opportunities to make new friends, to build strong business networks. Also, for those who do consultations with me, I often turn around and connect you with like-minded people, whether they're in the same industry, they have a similar skill set, a similar ambition, or you live in proximity. So uh, we got about five guys working on a new technology within the SaaS. And, and you know, three of the guys I had consultations with, I was like, hey, join these meetings. You know, You need to learn about this stuff. 
So those are the opportunities that you have to seize further. There shouldn't be an expectation that your family will support your ambitions because if they truly understood your ambitions in as much as like recognizes like, that would mean that they too were geniuses and geniuses are rare. We have a Dual Ages Bot Conference 1 and 2 footage. We'll make sure we send that to you as soon as we're off this live. Indeed. And Conference 2 footage is particularly good for education and understanding the differences in male-female roles, knowing how to inspire and guide your woman, and most importantly, product-based business. How do you make a buck? How do you choose a product to uh, put on the market? We have Christian said, it amazes me how certain women use religion as a facade. Mm -hmm. I know relatives that act super religious in public, but commit wickedness in private. Well, it's quite comical because some of them even commit wickedness in public. You see, there are a great many females who have Bible scripture on their Instagram profile. And then if you look below, they have their butt cheeks out as well. So there's a great deal of hypocrisy. And what I've realized, and this epiphany came to me recently, is that most religions are social groups, which is to say people are within them for the sense of community and the social aspect. They like to go to church and have a, a base to come back to. But in terms of actually understanding the religious texts and carrying, out, carrying it out, this is very uncommon. And in fact, when you find people who do carry out the religious texts, what do we call them? We call them extremists. Whether we're talking about the Amish, the Mennonites, the Jehovah's Witness, the Mormons, the devout Muslims, we call them extremists when really they're just doing what their book says. It's quite rare. We have Black Pill World said, looks are the most important thing in dating. Everything is secondary or doesn't even matter. You are good looking and tall, so you don't understand. Women only like tall, fit, good looking men like you. <laughs> Let me give you guys a brief story. I was in New Orleans, and I'll give you two stories from New Orleans. I'll just make a brief one now. And while I was there, I spent a lot of time with Mike Epps. Mike Epps is an actor and comedian. I primarily appreciate him for his stand-up comedy. So on two different nights, we spent four hours together. We had a lot of conversation. And every now and then, I meet someone that's interesting, especially if I find them to be a reflection of me. I'll kind of poke them and ask them questions just to see what they'll say. And I remember asking Mike, I said, hey, Mike, you know, I've had the money for a while and all the other things, but you have the fame, like real fame. And, you know, during the time we were hanging out, one person recognized me and like 18 people recognized him. So there's a big gap in, in fame and clout. And I said, you know, does that fame really bring them hoes out? And he says, he's like, you know what? Quote, and I hate to be vulgar, but this is what he said. He said, you know, it, it depends on the nigga, which I tend to agree, which is to say that it depends on you. You know, there are a lot of aspects beyond being tall, good looking and fit. And I appreciate your compliment, Saint. And certainly that is a, an advantage. But to say that you can't get in that game and ball is not true. It's just more difficult, right? Just like the NBA. You should be tall, but you still got guys like Allen Iverson, which is Allen Iverson's my size. Muggsy Bogues is you got Muggsy Bogues, who's much smaller. So yes, you have to have more skill, but you can still get the job done. Or where there is a will, there is a way. So what you should question is, how strong is my will? And further, if you check back to one of my early videos, it was uh, about one of my mentors named Kevin Cox, who was one of the most player cats I could ever tell you about. He was definitely overweight <laughs> by a wide margin and even looked like he had short arms. I don't know if his arms were really short or they just looked short because his stomach was so damn big. Uh, looked like kind of like a T-Rex. But anyways, he was okay looking in the face, but he was fat and had short arms and was also short. He's probably like five, seven tops. But when I say he used to slay him, Lord Jesus, he used to slay him. And the man was magical. He always went that extra mile. And one of his best tools was humor. And further, what you should know is that women are trust animals. So anytime you can spend a lot of time around them to build that familiarity as you like let that game gather up on them, you're going to win. And I appreciate you sharing this note for there's truth in your word. AR sent $20. He said, my ex of three years texted me venting to me. No good afternoon. How you been? Nothing. Surprised I responded, but was operating on my saintly nature. Told her to ask her current man for advice, not me. Left on open thoughts. Well, perhaps you were operating on your saintly nature. Perhaps not. I say that because I would have to know if she's a good person, if you would consider her to be a good person. In all likelihood, if she's coming to you 
verbally bashing her current man. That is not the trait of a woman who is behaving in a saintly way. And when we say be good to good people, you, you must also remember that I also say you want to stay away from people who are unattractive, whether they're unattractive because they're in poverty or they're unattractive because there is hideousness inside of them and in their soul and in their behavior. So if that's the case, you probably want to distance yourself from someone like that. But it sounds as though she is outside of your goals. She's not your woman. So she's not your responsibility. And you probably might continue keeping that three-year distance going. We have Saeed said, tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And to the gentleman's bit about his ex-girlfriend, you have to remember that one of the things that separates the male and the female is that the male stays rational. Always sticking to your goals, sticking to your principles and saying, yes, I do have a heart, but what does the mind say about this? Having a high level of focus and discipline, that will, of course, separate you from women quickly, but it will make you, uh, it will put you at the top of mankind. We have Rakeen five cent tuition. He's the saints. Yeah. Tony agreed with your comment that, you know, size doesn't necessarily matter. He said, I got a cousin, five, eight, 150 pounds can get a woman to do anything. And then he emphasized anything. anything. And I didn't say size doesn't matter. I didn't say good looks don't matter. I, I'm not saying they don't count. I'm saying they are not all that counts. And I wouldn't lie to you. Moon Bentley said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Liam said, Marquette, I'm an abstinent young man. Mm. I find myself attracting women with good qualities for a good future, but they often want this work and right. end up frustrated because I won't. How should I handle this? Well, my dear brother, you did not mention why you are abstinent. And I was just uh, speaking with a young man on a consultation just yesterday, uh, an excellent saint. And in fact, every time I see these young men, I'm always impressed because they always want to be the best. And that's what we say in the Creed of the Assassin, which is to show the best of yourself. And I love to see these men striving for greatness. This young man was a, uh, is, is practicing abstinence. And he said, Marquette, you know, is it okay if I deal with women? I say, oh, absolutely, you should. Because number one, women are going to be a critical part of your success. It is likely that you should try to spend your life with a woman who is reliable and upright. And you're going to need some practice. You see, you're going to need some practice for sure, because when a woman comes into your life, you are inviting into your life a puzzle, you see, and you must start getting some practice on how to put those pieces together. So firstly, why are you being abstinent? If it's a religious thing that you've dedicated yourself to, then you need to find a woman who shares that value. He said religious reasons. Yes. Well, then clearly you should find a woman who shares that value, whether you're a seven-day Adventist, a Mormon, a Muslim. Um, I find very few Christians practice that in reality, but if you're a Christian practicing that, please do seek out a woman who is your equal in that regard. Vapor Saint came through with another $10. He said, when should I get a hotel room for the conference? Which, side note, I did send everyone that's confirmed an email today just asking about dietary restrictions. There is one person, I'm not going to name their name, that did not receive an email because we do not have yours. So if you didn't get an email from me, please email us. Yes. And he asked about when should he book the hotel. If he's referring to like the fluctuations in pricing, if he books it sooner or later, or is he referring to if for which dates should he book when it? Should I get a hotel room? So feel free to just send us a contact us form submission and add some detail on your question. We'll give you a response. And looking forward to seeing you in Saint City. You dig? It's going to be a real fun affair. Are you caught up? I'm caught up. Okay, you, you'll have to let me know. Okay. <laughs> you just start chilling, huh? Uh, shout out to Junior, by the way, who just became a member at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. Uh, now let us get to our core topic. And feel free to continue sending in your questions and tuition so we can have them lined up and ready to go. I want to talk to you about a number of things tonight, saints. I'm, I'm really um, entertained. And we got some good stories, some real life stories. We have Beyond Vation sent $20. He said, I just experienced a moment of stress and weakness for responsibilities that I have as the leader of a week-long mission we start tomorrow. So I listened to you and ran five miles for being too comfortable. Embrace difficulty. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And you have to remember that being the leader is a privilege. Well, it's not a privilege because you earn it. But shall we say you're in the spotlight and people look up to you and there's an esteem that comes with that. So you get to appreciate being the leader but also it's hard work. And when you encounter the challenge, that's when you should remember, ah, yes, they, they may clap for the leader. They may look upon the leader with respect, 
but it's the leader who also carries the weight. This is my end of the responsibility and I can do this. Carry on. So I'm glad to hear that you found a reserve. We have Tari said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. We have Mike Salvador said peace to the saints and greetings from the strip in Saint City. Peace to the saints. Also, Mike must be in, in town visiting. He must be. Okay. That's good to hear. Wow. I wish I'd have known that earlier. We also have Ezekiel said, do you agree that women should be on the last of priorities for a man that's focused on his purpose? I think this terminology of focus on his purpose, it's a curious uh, terminology. I usually say focus on goals. Purpose has this spiritual sound of like my greater purpose. I'm meant to be fill in the blank when I don't know if that's necessarily the case for everyone. And I can't say that people are discovering their purpose in their early 20s, right? That might take some time for you to figure that out. But what you can always have are goals. And goals are finite, definite, clear, have deadlines. So should you prioritize a woman over your goals? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no, sir. But I rarely put them on ends against each other. If you remember, I'm often telling you, you should always seek alignment, which is to say, how can I take this woman, which is one of the resources at a player's disposal, and put her into play in pursuit of my goals? That's much higher level thinking. You see, you could compare her and say, oh, either I can deal with the woman or I can deal with my goals. Or you can ask yourself, well, how can I do both? How can I bring this woman in to help me achieve my goals? And one thing that a genius wrote, and I do mean a genius, a man whose IQ has been verified as a genius, he said, my advice to you would be when you come upon a fork in the road, go both ways. No homo. He's essentially saying that when there are two good opportunities, take both of them. You can do it. Don't spread yourself thin, but never pass up an opportunity. And there, that opportunity you described, you can maximize that. Get to work on that. Daniel said tuition. He said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. He'll be at the conference too. Indeed, he will. He got the, the final ticket. Yes, he did. We have Ricardo sent $20. He said, met a girl at a party. Mm. We spoke while we danced. Okay. She is from Honduras. Okay. 32 years old, looked bad, like MJ, and right. very youthful. Good to hear. Doesn't know a lick of English. It get like that. And has been living here for four months. Whoa. She's definitely not qualified, but. Yeah, go ahead and beat that down. It get like that. Go ahead and strap it up, though, because, <laughs> you know, she might be trying to catch an opportunity out here in the land of opportunity. You dig. So make sure that you go ahead and strap that peel that kind of back to the serial numbers and beat that down like Rodney King. Cause uh, you know, sounds like she needed in her life. Sounds like you might need it in your life. Ain't nothing wrong with enjoying yourself. You dig as long as you do it responsibly, uh, responsibly live to fight another day. Jay said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Vigil sent $10. He said the Sassan sunglasses came in yesterday. Okay. Your pair will be shipped out tomorrow. Looking forward to meeting with the saints tomorrow. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And I'm, I'm glad he mentioned that we actually have a meeting tomorrow and if you're one of the members at marquetism.com or patreon.com slash the saint in the center, 9 a.m. tomorrow, you'll be able to come on screen. We'll all be on screen. We'll be having a bit of a social call, just, you know, chopping it up, talking through goals in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and talking about the SAS and the things that we're building and all that good stuff. So make sure you tune in. It'll be a good time. And Mitchell, I will work on getting those posted. We have a couple of new products from different saints that will be posted this week, including his sunglasses and a different briefcase model from Preston. Absolutely. Shout out to Preston. He's been a long time saint, very loyal. He's coming out with a product. And you know what? Uh, go ahead and smash the like button for that. We're putting money in people's pockets in a real way. Ricardo came back with another $20. Okay. He said, want to know how after asking for her number and not receiving it that night before leaving has the nerve to ask me to tell the security officer she says hi. What? And then the next day ask mutual friend to give me her number. Look. Is that ridiculous? Absolutely. Are women often ridiculous? Absolutely. And another thing you should be mindful of is that timing is a, another critical piece that men are not so well attuned with. You see, timing for a woman is very important. Let me give you a short uh, anecdote. Now, there was a time I was out in a nightclub environment. I encountered uh, maybe about five very attractive women. So I started talking to one of them. And then all of a sudden, her friends were going to leave, and they're like, hey, hey, we're leaving. And so she turns away, like, oh, bye-bye, almost rudely, and just dips out. And I was thinking, oh, man, I thought I was about to catch her slipping. 
Fast forward four hours later. I see her outside of the club. Long story short, 20 minutes later, I'm beating it down, taking her down like a hitman. What's the moral of the lesson? The moral is that timing is critical because when you meet a woman in the club, what does she want to do? She wants to be a club thought. She wants to dance. She wants to be seen. She wants to be in the VIP. She wants to enjoy the music. She wants to get attention. She wants to live in that way that we would expect a 304 to live. But then after that, she was like, you know, you're a good looking guy and I'm a 304. So let's do what we do. So timing is a critical piece. Further, to think that women are linear, logical creatures like us, that is not the truth. So we cannot project our inclinations and personality traits onto them. They're not one, two, three kinds of individuals. They're like seven, eight, nine, 44, two, two, point five. You know, that's how they are. So we have to respect that and anticipate it and never take things too seriously when the situation doesn't seem to go our way straight away. It doesn't mean you're out of the game. And remember, persistence overcomes resistance. You did because I caught her slipping on the back end. We have Dylan said, met a young lady also in college, bisexual. Uh -oh. She opened up her traumas to me and does good work for me. How might I combat her inherent lazy nature? Oh, she's inherently uh, lazy? Uh, and bisexual. And, <laughs> Bridge said, and bisexual. Is that a factor, Bridge? It, that is. <laughs> That's a major factor. A red flag. <laughs> <laughs> it always red. Major. <laughs> uh, I tend to agree no that. No such thing. It, it, there's, oh, there's no such thing as bisexual? No such thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. I tend to agree with Bridget in that the bisexuality is certainly something that will become a factor in your relationship, not in a good way. You might think, oh, bisexual, awesome. We got these threesomes popping off. But in all reality, it's likely to be the result of trauma's experience. And it puts you at greater risk, not only in terms of sexually transmitted disease, uh, but also just ability to trust her. Like, are her friends her friends or are they her ex-girlfriends? I mean, there's just so much going on. Now, your question is, how do you combat her inherent laziness? Well, if something is innate, meaning like really a part of the nature, you really can't train that out of them. So you'll really have to take a strong pimp hand to her. I say that in the metaphorical sense. And I always say, plant your seed in fertile ground. Is it easier to get a lazy chick to work with? Is it easier to get a hardworking chick to work? So pick your battles. Use everyone for what they're good for, which is to say, I got one car that has two doors. It's not good for transporting large loads. So recently I had to transport a bunch of goods. I didn't use my two door. I used the SUV. Use things to their best effect. And in this case for her, it might be uh, getting some good Lewinsky, you dig, um, and having a little bit of fun. But perhaps if she's lazy and can't follow a direction, she's a fall down bitch. Uh, you might go ahead and uh, realize that and act accordingly. We have Austin said, peace to the saints. Good evening, Marquette. Where can I find the Snow Bunny 4000s at? They are so cold. Super cold. And I did it? put them in the description already. It's on screen briefly, but you can find that in the chats. Indeed. MDBlabel.com. Just click shop. It'll and then go down to the proper product. Yes, indeed. We have Abdullah said, tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And I might uh, add that the Snow Bunny 4000s are a limited run. And as well, the joggers, the white and gray ones are also a limited run. In fact, all of those joggers are limited runs. So um, those will probably be going out within 24 hours. Snow Bunny 4000s and the joggers will no longer be available within 24 hours. Okay, Sigma sent $20. He said, peace to the saints. Marquette, my roommate thinks men should worship her and women are superior to men. How can I enlighten her with some truth and playerism? Why, why do that? <laughs> you would be shocked to see me in real life. And I get along with a lot of people whether they're people who guzzle Skittles or they're people who uh, purport to live alternative lifestyles, I let them carry on as they are, realizing that the student will not accept the lesson if they're not ready to learn. So you cannot position yourself as a teacher to someone whose ear is not ready for you to impart knowledge. So I often ask myself before I do something, how does this relate to my goals? Is this a good use of my time? And in the case of trying to convince a feminist <laughs> to be a normal person, that sounds like a bad idea. 
Michael said, peace to the Saints. Purchased Conference 2 footage last night. He's also coming to Conference 3. Peace to the Saints. Started a product-based business today. Thanks for the constant value. And he was the serious one that got that last ticket. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And I always say that you can tell how someone lives and what kind of person they are by their sense of urgency. You can tell if a business deal is going to get done by the urgency. You can tell if the woman's going to actually show up for the date you invited to her to based on the urgency. And he got the footage last night and already started a business today. As he should. And that's urgency. what it's that's what it's designed for to accelerate your success. We have someone named Zachary Ferguson who said he's new here um, and he's loving it so far. Peace to the saints. And can everyone please welcome him warmly for that is supposed to be one of the differences in how we conduct ourselves and how people out in the world behave. Drug Hour said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. David sent $20. He said peace to the saints. First time paying tuition to support your important work. I really appreciate that. And as you see, I offer knowledge on a variety of topics. And most importantly, we offer organizational structure to support you to increase your prosperity. Uh, to bring you within a community and also allow you to understand this world we're in, which is in some ways twisted. Ezekiel sent, I think this is a second super chat. He said, I live near Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia, Holland. not seeking, but where would I be able to find a good woman who will actually help me achieve my goals and not a regular broad? Well, number one, you got to go fishing. You see, the truth is that from the outside, you have women who are <laughs> worthless, who try to look like they have worth. From the outside, you have a lot of people trying to project certain things that are not true. The only way to figure it out is to meet the girl, have some conversation with her, hit, hit her with that Dr. Phil process. And then when you find that she needs to be thrown back to the streets, go ahead and let go of her. But the truth is that, yes, these women will be gathered in certain places more likely than others, right? You're more likely to meet her in a library than the club, more likely to meet her at a university uh, university than the mall, more likely to meet her at a conference than a strip club. You know, so those are the kind of places you should find yourself. But one thing I promise you is that one of the best women you'll find is while you're on pursuit of your goals. When you're pursuing something and you're on that business trip, you're at the airport, you're doing the things that lead you to the right place, she will be there. Emmanuel sent $20. He said, peace to the saints. What are some good sources to learn marketing service-based business and manual therapy and fitness? <laughs> uh, number one, be careful about those service-based businesses. Those will exhaust you. And it's very hard to get to a million bucks uh, doing service-based businesses. In terms of marketing, you could learn marketing or you could hire an expert. So as a business person, you should always ask yourself, is this my expertise or am I pretending and wasting my time? You always want to focus on what you're best at. So if you're the person who executes the service, then you should do the service and pay someone else who's a marketer. This is probably someone who's mastered Google ads uh, or things like that. Someone who takes a data-based approach. We have Daniel just became an, a boss on Patreon. Peace of the Saints. Part of the SAS and the FIA issue. Think we have the Beta Bail podcast said, my lady is going over and above to prove herself to my standards on what I will not allow in order for her to be in my presence. Mm. Listening to fine tune this area while working on reinvesting. Peace mm. to the saints. Peace to the saints. I'm very happy to hear that. You know, To have a woman who's on your program gives you a great asset, gives you more peace of mind. Really, it's a great source of wealth. You dig? I remember in a recent podcast, a woman had asked me, I think she thought she was being slick and disrespectful. She says, well, where's your lady at? And I said, well, my woman is all over me. You feel me? When you see like this custom watch, when you see my state of peace in my mind, you see that I'm well nourished. My woman's all over me. But a real queen likes to stay in the castle. You feel me? It's these, it's these harlots that like to be out in the streets. Dallas Griffin came in with $20. He said, trying to beat my friend Emmanuel to the punch as we are both paying our tuition watching the assassin. I think Emmanuel... Came in first, also <laughs> with the same amount. But, um, he said, peace to the saints. This is real informative game. Makes you wonder why these values aren't taught in our current educational system. It's good that they're competing and trying to get it in first. Oh, it's always good to win. Yeah. I love winning. I damn near might have to get off the lecture and, and start super chatting just to beat them. <laughs> but we could take time wondering why or as a man get to work with action. 
we're in a time where that is really what's required. The educational system is curious in that the government runs the schools. The government also steals your money in the form of taxes, but the government doesn't even teach you how to pay taxes and avoid tax trouble. It's quite ironic, which is to say that the government's incompetent and wants you ignorant and at their mercy. It historically has been the case that the wealthy do not put their kids in public schools, government-run schools. If you read the meditations of Marcus Aurelius, he speaks of wisdom from one of his elders, which is to say that it is best for a man to spend liberally on very few things. He names two things, one of which is education. And I agree. And you must make sure that you get the right education. Clarence Rogers said, I would love to see you knock out Jake Paul, brother. <laughs> you can uh, knock out anyone you fought. <laughs> peace to the saints, you dig? CJ Bailey said, late to the lecture, tuition, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Good to see you again. And we have Jalen Morrison sent $20 on PayPal. He said, reading the black box at first, I was kind of confused with the time skips, but ended up loving how the stories connect in a way. One chapter I connect with is pick a side when your brother heard with fat Corey ended. How do you deal with a person you once considered your brother and would literally die for, but are now not on the same page anymore? It's as if a piece of my heart is gone and strangely though, strangely enough feels worse than a heartbreak with a woman. Number one, you have to get into the practice of accepting reality, the new reality. And further knowing that you hear people say the silly thing of like, oh, you know, it was meant to be or everything works out. That's not true. Things work out when you make them work out. Things work out for the best when you make them work out for the best. And as a man, that should be your iron, iron will to make that the case. The truth is, if you're a man of merit, you're upright, anyone who falls out of good graces with you has probably done so because there's something in them that is not aligned. Whether you're moving forward financially and they're standing still, whether you're improving yourself physically and they refuse to exercise, whatever the case is, you must leave the past in the past. It can be challenging. And as you mentioned, Fat Corey, today, uh, he never crosses my mind. And today, no disrespect to him, but he and I are on radically different levels of achievement. And so now it makes perfect sense that we fell out because our lives today are radically different. So we were not of the same feather. And perhaps that's something he realized sooner than I did. CG Cap just up, upgraded to an emperor level on Patreon. He's wise because I actually am phasing out consultations. So on the sassin.com, I've actually closed it off for membership. You cannot become a member now. Marquetism.com, you can still become a member. Um, I will eventually close out the emperor level, which is the level that allows you to get the monthly consultation. And for now, you can still book an hour consultation at marquetism.com. You used to be able to book an hour and a half as well. I also ended that one. So you might be wise to book it now for that opportunity will come to a close. Vapor Saint said, reminder to talk about males behaving like females and fake alpha males. And he wrote Mardi Gras. So I'm not sure. Uh, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. We have Anthony Tibbs said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. We have James Brandon said, when you are aware of the great evil and dark agendas progressing in the world, how does one maintain peace of mind? The state of the world stresses me. Oh, it shouldn't stress you at all because you get to choose your view, which is to say that sometimes people who get worried and worked up about all these things going on in the outside, uh, that's an indication of maybe you're not busy enough or you don't have control over your mind. For example, you know, I could get worked up over all the things going on, or I could just take a look at what's immediately around me and say, wow, I got a nice life here. I got, we got five bedroom, uh, five bathrooms. Yeah. You got five bathrooms. Like every now and then I just go to a different bathroom just because there's just literally, <laughs> yeah, there's literally no reason. Shower in a different one every day. <laughs> exactly. There's literally no reason. And so when you can focus on those things that are close to you, that are more relevant and positive, it's all a choice. So I advise you to, number one, accentuate the positive in life. Focus on that, which is within your locus of control, things you can reach out and touch, and be good to good people, and that will give you solace. 
Liam's back with another $10. He said, I want to be polygamous in the future and work hard to have the means to do so. When should a man share my vision for the family up front or in the process? In the process. Junior Lamar, who's the one that became a patron today, he said, you've studied African language, culture, and I'm assuming religion. What are your thoughts? <laughs> when you say African, uh, the African continent, I believe you could fit two and a half Europe's inside of Africa, which is to say it's a massive continent that's wildly diverse, not only linguistically, but also even in terms of the racial subcategories. You'll find Africans that are pale and short, have narrow nose bridges and thin lips, Africans that are tall, very dark, and have very thick lips and a wide nose bridge. So there is very, there's a lot there. But what I can tell you is that in terms of language, one of the challenges today on the continent is that they have not selected one official language in significant, a significant number of countries. Secondly, in failing to select one official language, they are causing instability in their country because you have many tribes that have their mother tongue. Then you have Swahili as an official language. You might also have French and English. And so the country's not going to run well. That's that. Secondly, in terms of religion, I don't find that any of the religions that are dominating in Africa are helping the people there. They really need some ism. Uh, but the culture there is respectable and it's fairly traditional. Men are still leading. Women are still pretty respectable, although they are, of course, becoming victim to Western influence. And that's happening globally. Zachary, who we welcomed earlier, he said, I needed to hear that. And then a few minutes later, he said, I just heard two things I needed to hear. LOL. Very good. Zanaria said, peace to the saints. Unfortunately, I won't be able to go to the conference. Was mm. really looking forward to attend. However, I did get that job. I asked your advice on me being too young for the position. Wow. wow. Peace to the saints. That's very good to hear. Zanaria had the pleasure of speaking with in a consultation. Uh, super player, young man. Good looking young man. And I'm happy to hear that you're making progress. And as always, you must put first things first. You're the one that you talk about as long. Oh, time. yeah. The <laughs> hair so player. You heard me. I just want to start playing the Bee Gees and strutting around. Good Lord, man. Well, congrats on your job. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. May all the saints congratulate him because that is how we are. We show love. We admire those who are winning. I am caught up. Fantastic. Thank you for that announcement. I want to share something with you guys because we got a lot of fakers. And the sad thing is sometimes the young men, take that off the screen, sometimes the young men look out and they look at something and they think it's a genuine article when it's really a fakey. If you've read my book, The Black Box, there's one chapter that I wrote that I enjoyed reading, or excuse me, I enjoyed writing, and I also enjoyed living. It was a chapter about the very first time I met a real gangster. You hear me? A real G-A-N-G stir. And the thing that was remarkable about this gangster was that, number one, he was small. <laughs> you know, homie was like 5'5". Five, five. And I was one of those kids who bloomed early. You know, I was taller than everybody early. And he was a small guy. And just sign up for the guy who said, you got to be good looking and tall and buff to get the girls. Where I'm from, the gangsters used to get girls. So chicks were on him too. The funny thing is not only did he have this menacing scowl, he also had a cleft lip. So his lip was like this. I don't know if that was from a fade gone wrong or what. But I remember the first time I met him and I could look at him and I was like, man, this boy, this kid's a dog. You know what I mean? Like, he's not scared of anything. And if you read my book, you can hear about the experience in which I encountered him and I knew that he was a fi to the gristle, not a pretender. Today, people try to take on the appearances of the stronger animal. This happens in nature as well, where you have a weak animal or a small animal attempts to puff itself up or to look like the stronger predator. So the prey tries to mimic the predator so that people don't bother it. For example, is it called the blowfish? Yeah. It's the blowfish and it increases its body mass significantly so it appears big, even though inside of that body is nothing but hollowness and hot air. It's all an act. It's all for show. How do human beings today, males, puff themselves up to appear to be a tough guy or an alpha male when really they're a sweet little marshmallow? They like to cover themselves in tattoos so that they can look like a gangsta. They like to dress in a certain way. They like to get grills and gold teeth so they can look like hustlers, drug dealers. 
when they ain't never sold a drug in their life, ain't never caught a body in their life, they'd be scared to do it. So they want to take on this appearance of the tough guy, of the rapper, of the African-American, because the African-American has been hyper-masculine. So that's kind of like the gold standard of masculinity around the world because hip-hop music has been so influential. Let me show you a fake alpha male, and this was really neat. Now, generally, I ignore this stuff because there's no profit in it, but I want to do two things. One, I want to show you this fake alpha male, and then I want to give you a story about a fake alpha male trying to you know, act like a tough guy with me. And I think this story is important for you to hear because generally speaking, I'd sock somebody like this out. But in this particular context, it was not the best thing to do. And I'll tell you why. So the first piece, let's take a look at this, uh, this alpha male or, or this fake alpha male, right? But notice, I want you guys to understand because when you're looking at manhood, some of us confuse being a man with being violent or being aggressive or being mean or stern or not getting emotional, which none of those things are actually the measure of a man. Huh? Yes, I might be breaking some of your false beliefs right now. So let's go ahead and talk about it. First, let's take a look at this. So this I found comical. So if you can see this uh, comment right here, it's on one of my videos. So there's a video we had some, some nice young ladies on. This young lady in the black with the black hair was very talkative. Uh, <laughs> so in the comments here, you'll see this individual named Asad Mohibi, and he writes, what is this, question mark, the Kroger version of FNF, who are these clowns? Now, by the way, shout out to the homies in Miami, you dig? Who are these clowns? Now, mind you, one thing that lets me know straight away that this guy is soft and that he did not grow up in a ghetto is the way he's speaking. The first thing you will notice if you grew up in a poverty-stricken place, if you grew up around real goons, when I went from living among goons and I went into university at Berkeley, first thing I noticed was that these middle class and upper class people, they talk to each other with disrespect, the males. They call each other names, vulgar words. They sex play each other. They do all kinds of weird things because there are no consequences. Where I grew up, you talk reckless to somebody, you might get your consequence ASAP. So you always want to figure out who you're talking to. And another thing that my OGs taught me, they said, hey, when you're in jail, one thing you can assume is that everybody is at least a little bit grimy. You might be standing next to a killer or you might be standing next to somebody who can become a killer. So watch your mouth. Show everybody respect in there. And I always took that to heart because it's true. And I maintain that on the outside when I'm addressing people. I always address people with respect. When there is a conflict, I always first try to offer platinum or gold or silver friendship, in other words, or a favor. I try to offer something positive. Now, if it goes left, then it has to go left. But let me encourage you as a man, don't always first try to be the tough guy. Because in the civilized world and in the modern era, that is not the best way. It's not effective. Now, if we were in the age of Attila the Hun, I'd probably be chopping off people's heads, putting their head on my dinner table, gouging out their eyeballs, eyeballs and sticking breadsticks in there and eating it in front of you. I'd probably be doing that because that's who I really, I'm not going to go too far. You heard me. But anyways, now consider this. This little nerd writes, uh, who are these clowns? Now, first off, when I talk about manhood, men are goals oriented and also men are rational and we're linear thinkers. Goals, linear thinking and rationality, not emotionalism. So there have been a lot of things on the internet. I look at it and I'm like, this is weird. Do I take out my time to type something? No, of course not. I just carry on. Do I take out my time to click thumbs down? No, nah, it's not a good use of my time. It doesn't enhance me. It doesn't achieve my goals, right? So this emotional person makes a comment. And my first thought is like, what is he, a butt buddy of these guys? He's, he's a butt buddy with them. So then I say, I say, what's your Instagram, right? Because me, I got time. I'll say, okay, what's your IG? So I go ahead and see his IG. He, he writes same as my name. So then I'm like, ooh, I like this. He, he's kind of with the shits. And I like that a lot because I'm with the shits too. So then I say, please send me a DM. You know, I'm respectable. You, you feel me? Like one thing about me is I'm respectful. I, I always try to be polite. I truly encourage you. When you go somewhere, you make an order. May I? Thank you. Please. I always encourage it. It represents you well. So I say to this nerd, Please send me a DM when you're planning a Las Vegas trip. I live in a city where you can say that because everybody comes to Vegas at some point. 
I wish he was famous because then I could get a heads up when he's coming. You feel me? Or when he's in here, my people can tell him like, hey, he's in the city. There was a person recently came through. He didn't give me a heads up. He didn't tap in with the mayor and he should have. My people said, oh, hey, he's right here. And I had to pull up on him. I'll tell you about that one. Not in this live session. We'll do a different one. Anyways, I say, I'll set you up a hotel. Then we can go to my boxing gym and get a few rounds in. You see, because that's really the kind of person I am. I'm the kind of person that would pay for his hotel, sock him straight out in the boxing gym and pay for an Uber to take him to the hospital or take him back to his suite, wherever the case is, because I'm really like that. Now, the thing is, so I go ahead and uh, so I, I told him that. And then he was and then I check out his IG. And let's take a look at his IG to see what kind of character he is. So you guys can get a better sense. And the reason this is so important to check out is because it's instructive of the fake alpha male. You can tell who someone is very easily if you have the proper lens. Look at this guy. So here he is right here. And let me tell you why this is funny, because I can see a soft person a mile away. A mile away, I can see a soft person. And I can see a goon a mile away. Now, let me tell you what's phony about this guy. Assad. Number one, look at little buddy. So anytime I see a guy that has all these, these muscles, I'm like, oh, here we go. This guy is trying to project strength. That's a projection of strength. And why, why would you need to be one who appears strong? Maybe he's a weightlifter. He competes in weightlifting, right? No, he doesn't compete in weightlifting because there's no evidence of that. And if he was one who competed in weightlifting, there'd be evidence of that. So why do you want to appear so oversized? Because that's actually not the peak of physical health. The peak of physical health is me. Slim like a greyhound, fast like a greyhound. You heard me? Strong like a gorilla. That's the peak of physical health. He wants to appear strong so that you don't mess with him. Now let's carry on. Let's do a little analysis of these fake alpha males. What do the fake alpha males usually like to do to, to, to add to their appearance and make them look tough? They want to go the Vin Diesel route. They want to look like Vin Diesel. They go get some muscles and they get some tattoos. Why? Because historically, tough guys got tattoos. Back in the day, it used to be something that was rare. Only the criminals and thugs got tattoos. Now Justin Bieber has tattoos. Justin Bieber and Asad Mohibi have tattoos. So I look at his tattoos. I'm like, okay, the people I know with tattoos, you know what kind of tattoos they got? Tears. They got CK on their neck, which means Crip Killer. They got Hoover whacked out, which means you crossed out somebody's hood, which means you're basically disrespecting them. They got tattoos that are dead homies. The people I associate with, the people I grew up with. This guy has artwork on him. So I'm like, okay, that's cute, my dear boy. Very cute. And look, he's taking pictures of himself. So he's clearly not an accomplished person because when you're accomplished, you don't take pictures of yourself. Other people take pictures of you. But how do we know he's soft? And by the way, here's a funny thing. These, these kids are from Denver. And by the way, if you're in Denver or they're in Colorado, I don't know what city they're in. They're in Colorado. He has a Crenshaw uh, jersey on. Now, mind you, See, he, he probably doesn't even know where that comes from. Now, I'm a L.A. guy. You heard me? So I know people from 60s. I know people from Rich Rolling that could get your helmet slapped off. You dig? So if you ever pull up in L.A., oh, let me know. Let a boss know. <laughs> and wear that Crenshaw jersey when you pull up. You probably never even been to Crenshaw. Side note. Now, let's go through this guy's uh, profile. So number one, I basically asked him for the fade. I said, bro, you know, when you come through my city, holla at the big homie. We can hop in the boxing ring. We could get it in. Now, mind you, I'm looking at him. Assuming he's a normal height, he probably got like 40 pounds on me, at least. Assuming he's a normal height. If he's short, maybe we're the same weight. But if he's a normal height, probably got like 40 pounds on me. I still said, let's get these hands going. Why? Because I'm really a savage. And more importantly, I could look at him and tell he's not a savage. It'll be easy work. Here's why. A man who has all these muscles, he doesn't compete in bodybuilding. He doesn't throw hands. How do I know? Because people who throw hands, they love throwing hands. They, they'll show you they throw hands, people who throw hands. I'll give you an example. A lot of the saints throw hands. You heard me? Because like attracts like. So one of the saints just tagged me today in one of his sparring sessions. So check, check him out. Shout out to the saints in uh, Sweden. You dig? So here go one of the saints, MMA guy, kickboxing guy, getting it in. You know, he getting that work in. 
So, you know, these are people who are real savages, who get the work in. And he's not a big buff guy. He's fit. He's in shape. He has good musculature. You feel me? But he's not trying to be a big buff guy. It's those big buff guys. They want to look the part of the alpha male, but they don't have the heart. That's why they have to have the appearance like a blowfish. They pump up the appearance because inside is just hot air. And what's the evidence of the hot air? Let's go back to his comment when a real wolf said, okay, relative. You're a tough guy. That's great. Me too. When you come to my city, let a boss know. Because again, I live in a city where everyone comes through at some point. Check this out. This is how I knew he was a jokester. And then this is when I stopped communicating. So I said, um, I said, come to Las Vegas. I'll set you up a hotel, which is a consideration. We'll go to my boxing gym. We'll get in a few rounds. That's simple. That's simple. Then he says, you're not my weight class or tax bracket. Now, let's be real here. We already looked at the weight class part. He's right. I'm not in his weight class, but I still, I still lay him out. Easy work. Tax bracket. Let's take a look. Tax bracket. He's making a suggestion that he's financially well off. I don't believe it. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because a lot of women, the reason that they can't deal with a lot of guys, you, you talk to them and they won't believe that you're the real deal is because they meet a lot of fake alpha males who portent, pretend to be me. They pretend to meet me. He's talking about tax bracket. That's my life. He's talking about being a tough guy. That's my life. I really throw hands out here. And I'm not talking about just in the ring. So, so let's take a look at him. Let's see if he is what he says. Okay, so he said tax bracket. Uh, where's his car? This, these aren't his cars because he's a part of some car club. Some part of a car club. He's tagging his little car club. He's not inside of any of these cars. He's just taking photos of random cars. He's not even inside of it. So that's not, that's not your car, little buddy. So let's see, tax bracket, where's the wealth at? You only got 12 posts. Let's see where you've traveled to. Nowhere. You have Colorado here. You're from Colorado. Wow, little buddy. You haven't traveled anywhere. I don't see any properties. I don't see any cars. Where's the wealth at? I don't even see you being recognized for anything. So the wealth is not there. This, this is all like, this is all babble. So I want you to see that when you see these guys out in the world, they got their tattoos. They grills in, they trying to talk with an accent that's not even from where they from, you know, and, and they got all these big muscles. Do me a favor, bro. If they act crazy, go ahead and two piece them straight away. They're going to go out like a light switch because it's all bluster. It's all bluster. And how do we know? Check this out. So we have no evidence of his wealth. And you, you might be like, Marquette, well, where's the evidence of your wealth? Shit, where isn't it? Where isn't it? Let me see. Because the things I do, you can't even fake. Like you can, he took pictures in front of other people's cars. That's pathetic. You could open up a magazine and see the big homie looking right back at you. You can't fake that. You, you see what I'm saying? You can't fake these things. He's also the reason and the type of person where people accuse us of renting a car. Right, exactly. This kind of guy, because he like takes pictures in front of other people's cars. That's why when you see the real deal, you like, you think that I'm him. Right. Because you saw mo there's more fakers than there are people who are really trail and live that life. You feel me? So, you know. Now, let's consider what he what he said. And this is when I knew he was a faker and I just stopped responding. By the way, shout out to the people who really be driving them, them double R's and they know what the spirit of ecstasy is. If you don't know what the spirit of ecstasy is, step your game up, baby. Now, check this out. And I want you guys to understand this because what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to commit the fatal flaw of pretending to be a tough guy when you're not. Because guess what? Being a tough guy comes with certain things that probably aren't good. I've been stabbed before. Extremely unpleasant experience. I've been jumped before. Three times, actually. I've been jumped three good times. Unpleasant experience is not necessary. Like, you should avoid that in life. Being a man, exercising manhood has nothing to do with bluster. It has nothing to do with your words and acting tough and looking big and trying to pretend that you're the Hulk. What'll happen when you talk crazy and you're really not like that, you will be inevitably exposed. So do not get confused into thinking that because you sound tough and look tough, you're a man. That's not manhood. That's actually very fake and phony. I'd say that's even closer to female behavior. Why? Because females are the ones who put on makeup. And when you're covering up all this stuff, tattoos, 
that's like a form of makeup. When you're covering up yourself with these big muscles, you look strong on the outside, but you're weak on the inside. That's makeup because your strength is made up. It's illusory, not a reality. Huh? So what I'm encouraging you to do is to be real and getting into conflict, getting into physical altercations. That's not an expression of manhood. It's more likely an expression of you not being able to solve things diplomatically, control your emotions and things like that. We have Hegemonia sent tuition. Peace of the Saints. Jonathan Turner bought the Snow Bunny 4000. You dig. He's smart because those are going to be uh, discontinued tomorrow. Nathaniel Reed sent $10 on PayPal. He said, Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. James Brandon came back with another super chat. He said, The Great Reset by Klaus Schwab is a book I recommend, Saint. It details a one world government currency. Do you think this is possible? Is it anything is possible? Do I think it is probable? I think it is improbable. You caught up? Nope. Okay. Generic Gaines said, hey, Marquette, if a hater approaches one of the assassins and ends up getting they ass killed and they pin the assassin as a gang organization, are you willing to do the time since you are our leader? Also working on some cybersecurity workflows for the assassin. We'll keep you updated. So when you say, are you willing to do the time? It is unlikely that they would find me and have me doing time further there is a major difference between the assassin and a criminal enterprise or a gang. So I think that's uh, quite unrelated because all of what I teach is about peace, prosperity, and morality. But undoubtedly, if someone accosts you or someone needs that in their life, you know, go ahead and deliver it. Juwan, who already sent $50, sent an additional 20 He said, read the black box, and it's one of the greatest books I've ever read. Mm. Piece Love the, the way you put lessons at the end of each chapter. It was also the biggest push towards me ending a six-year friendship that I was putting off for too long. I'm glad to hear that because you know what? Things don't get easier when you wait. A young lady I know recently, good-looking girl, she told me, Mark, when I walked into this restaurant to pick up some food, I'm waiting there to pick up the food. I know this guy staring at me. I know he's attracted to me. I know he's going to come try to talk to me. So I'm waiting to order my food. I get my food. I say goodbye to a couple of people. And then I go out to my car to get out of there. Then the guy comes out of the restaurant and tries to hurry up and spit some game at me. And I had to go ahead and kill it, hop in the car and skirt, skirt. Point is this. The longer he waited, the more weak he appeared to that female. The more time she had to think, uh, is he good looking? Do I like him? Is he tall enough? Is you know, does he look like he's financially stable? Like, do I have a man? Am I talking to someone? She has all this think time. Think time is never a good thing for females. You always want to seize the moment straight away. No hesitation. Hesitation is an indication of fear. And that's why I know anytime that a fight actually pops off, and I've told Bridget this many times, the many phase I've been in and witnessed, there's very little talking. One person says something disrespectful. The other person says, say that again. The other person says it again. And then the fists are flying. There's no long conversation. Same thing with a female. You see her, you want her, go get her, period. Hesitation is the killer of action. And the same thing in your business and in your personal relationships. When it's time to get something done, let's go ahead and mash the gas on it. So I'm glad you were inspired to get something done reading the black box. That's the purpose. Abdullah I said, peace to the saints. He showed how to pronounce his name. I have been a member at the assassin.com for almost a year, and I have seen tremendous change in my life. I have purchased the conference one and two to prepare for a future consultation. He's the one that purchased it while we were on the live. Indeed. Peace to the saints. I appreciate you being kind enough to share your experience with the saints so that they know there's real knowledge they can gain from purchasing conference one or two footage and as well from the ongoing content that we're releasing regularly on marquetism.com as well as patreon.com slash the saint in the center. Daniel Robinson said, no question, just thanks. Started playing rugby and survived a term of electromagnetism. Wow. It was great. It was giving me the body shots, but we eat those. <laughs> you dig. Let's go. You caught up? Nope. Collins NBA said, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And a great man named Lou said, peace to the saints. Have you been in the nightlife scene? scene? Literally creating a lounge and need some game. You know what? That is a scene that I'm very unfamiliar with because I don't drink alcohol and I don't like to waste my time out uh, around floozies. If I have to deal with a floozy, I kind of want to smash and dash. I don't want to spend like four hours with her out in the nightlife. So this is not an area that I have significant expertise in, but I will be increasing my time in the nightlife as it's a part of our takeover of Las Vegas because Vegas is an entertainment city. I do wish you much success with that business. Yeah, Francisco just bought some boxing shoes. So oh, shout those out. Are 
we sold a lot of those today. Yes. And you know what? We're running out. We've already sold out all the size 10. We sold out all of size 11. Yes. We only have 12, 13. I, I know we have nine and 13. Nine and 13, maybe 12. 12 as if, yeah. yeah, maybe 12, but we definitely have nine and 13. You better get yours because they will never be sold again. Limited run. Caught up? I am caught up. Fantastic. Some came through. We have Black Heights advancing your career said real estate is key. Since 2017, yes. I've acquired 14 rentals Let's allowing go. me to build the BH brand. And I purchased my first yacht on Thursday. Oh. Let me know when you are in Austin. I got you. Ooh, I like that. And bro, I've been to Austin. <laughs> Some bad females in Austin. Oh, your boy is having flashbacks. Look, I will definitely, definitely. Black Heights, Austin, I got you. Appreciate it. I'm trying to get to H-Town, though. I've never been to Houston. Marcus said, the women I'm currently talking to told me I'm too serious. Any advice on lightening up? He said That's Saints. Being serious is a great thing, but I understand from a female perspective, you don't want to be goofy with the female, but you do want to keep things light and always have that sense of optimism. And you're, when they look at you, they should see on your face that you're saying, I can do this, right? It's, it's that optimism. It's that, that, that look of like, oh, everything's beautiful over here. Everything's going to get better over here. That's the feeling that they want to get from you. And also women love humor because they're very light creatures. They're designed to be able to interact with children. And what do children like to do? They like to play. And you heard that song, girls just want to have fun. It's real out here. So in as much as that's the case, that's why we got the game. Because women like to play. That's why we got the game. We give them the game. You heard, <clears throat> you heard me? It all matches up. So make sure you engage that aspect. Me, myself, I'm a very serious man. And I was raised in a very serious environment. And what I found is that I had to lighten up over time. Would you believe that when I used to take photos and they'd be like, one, two, three, smile. I'd be like, yeah, because that's how I was, I was raised. That's how everybody took photos. As they say, one, two, three, your, in your like instinct was to like me mug. That's how we we're brought up. But the truth is that's not going to get the job done for the level that you're at right now. And especially if you want to be able to master that female's mind, you got to be able to relax her. James Brandon sent another super chat. He said, at my MMA gym, the hardest look like nerds, LOL. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. And the funny thing, going back to this little, this little nerd here, and the reason I, I bring him up is because he's a great example of a fake alpha male, right? You see, an alpha male is with the shits. So when he started babbling his mouth, I said, um, I said, hey, like, you know, when you come through, go ahead and let, let's knuckle up. And then he writes, forget the ring. We can get it in the suite. When I win, I host your show for the day. So that lets you know that he's a jokester. And the thing is, just like the saint who just said the girl said he's very serious. See, like me, I'm a very serious man. Now, when I'm talking, dealing with my females, I can lighten up. But when it's man to man, don't play with me. Don't play games with me. Like, let's keep it G. You heard me? Like, don't come at me in a funny way because I don't play games with grown men. And this guy clearly is a jokester. He's an internet nerd. And that's why I don't even respond to comments nine out of nine. But anyways, he writes, forget the ring, which is to say, I don't really want to fight. We can get it in in the suite. What's the logic of going into a fancy hotel suite and catching a fade in there and destroying things so that you have to pay for it? That doesn't make any sense. Let you know he's not serious. Then he says, when I win, I host your show for a day. So then that lets me know he's a clout chaser, meaning that he's a person who's a nobody and wants to be a somebody. And he wants me to help him do that, which is not going to happen. Uh, only thing I've helped do is show his profile so that hopefully you guys can go there and disrespect him and troll him. You heard me? <laughs> That's all I've done. Here he is right there. If you want to go uh, on his page and let him know he's a clown. Um, but I say that to say this. Once I realized that he was not serious, my words to him at that point were, quote, you are not a serious man. Our conversation ends here. Why, why were those my words at that time? Because me, if you're a serious man and you want to throw hands, let's throw hands. But if we're not going to get it in, get out like just you're done now. You're done. You're a female to me now. You heard me? And I'm kicking you aside. That's the nature of a real man. We don't deal with BS. Huh? We don't we don't play around in that stuff. Regizzle said, peace to the saints. Late bloomer, 37 years old, obese. Recently got a job making $60 an hour. Thought money would make me happy, but mm. still depressed. Can you drop some ism on me? I appreciate you sharing that note because that's really a, a fact that most people are 
not aware of. They think that once they become wealthy, life is going to be so different just because they can buy things they haven't had before. I don't think they realize that if you buy a Rolls Royce, it's a dope car before you get it. And then when you get it, you're like, oh, this is cold. And just a quick story. I remember when I got mine and I pulled up to the gas station the first couple of times, like people like, oh, hey, man, like they're asking you about the car and people are trying to take pictures with the car. And it's kind of fun the first couple of times. Then eventually I would go to the gas station and I would start like looking around like, oh, man, I hope nobody like sees me here. I hope nobody like walks up. And then my experience at the gas station trying to fill up this Rolls Royce with gasoline is about to be 20 minutes. So the experience became different. You know, so I say that to say, just like it says in the Quran, there's some things you think are good for you and they're not, they're bad for you. There's some things you think are bad for you and they're actually good for you. You know, sometimes that woman that you overlooked, maybe she wasn't quite what you expected in the face. Maybe she wasn't what you expected in the waist. You know, maybe she didn't come from the family you wanted her to come from. She might be the best one for you. But then you got this bad B who got the fake lips, the fake hips, and the fake everything. And you think that's the one, that's the one that will destroy you. Huh? So I say that to say this the money is just another illusion because all the things outside of you, externalities, those things are irrelevant because the whole ball game is inside of here. This is what I mean. And I learned this from an early age. My mother used to work with people who are suffering mental issues, whether it was mental uh, intellectual delay or they were schizophrenic, bipolar, autistic, whatever the case is, they had significant mental issues to where they could not function in society. And one thing I realized very quickly is that everything they experienced did not come from the material world. It didn't come from things you could touch. Everything they experienced, whether they were happy or sad, came from inside of their head. It was a creation of their mind. And just like a person who is mentally unwell can create negativity in their mind, they can hear voices in their mind. A person who is well and has control over this machinery, you can manufacture your own happiness. You can choose to be pleased. You can choose to see a beautiful world. You can choose to speak optimism. That's the critical piece. Number one, let me give you some advice. Get your body together. That's advice number one. I could give you a lot of advice, but I can give you one thing that's easy for you to get started on today, which is to be good to yourself. Get your body together. You're still very young at 37. I'm actually going to start a new challenge very soon. It's going to be for burpees. It's going to start at 6 a.m. in the morning. I will announce it soon, how many burpees you'll be doing and all the details. I encourage you to do it. Liam sent another super chat. He said, is the 11 and a half still available for the snow bunnies? And I did see that Mitchell shared the link for him. I appreciate that, Mitchell. And the snow bunnies, you can get all sizes in the snow bunnies. I think it goes up to 13. Until we discontinue it. But they will be discontinued within 24 hours. We have, I'm going to let you announce this one. Baller alert. Jay Barrow said, peace to the saints, sending love and positivity. That's a beautiful message. I appreciate that, Saint. It is appreciated. and welcomed a great man named lou came back he said thank you loved one i appreciate the honesty and the integrity and the answer peace to the saints ramsey said one of my mentors who was a senior oil chemist in saudi arabia once told me i know who is trustworthy and reliable based off their writing skills that's cold that's cold oh that's deep It's Rayo said, just tuning in, but I'm sure I'll be more knowledgeable by the end of this lecture. Peace to the saints, tuition. Peace to the saints. Indeed, you will. We all will. ZMJ said, peace to the saints. Thanks for the game as always. Peace to the saints. Michael Post said, peace, prosperity, and holistic health to the saints. Mm, Indeed. Holistic. That's mind, body, soul, and everything. Just Trent said, appreciate the ism over time, accumulated more money, a better mindset, and a high value woman. Peace to the saints. That man got it all. Got everything. Go up. And I am caught up. Fantastic. So I give you the first story on the fake alpha male pretending to be something he's not. Now he's lucky because he's a nobody. You see, if he comes through Las Vegas, no one will recognize his face. So none of my network can say, hey, quit. Like he's out here. Come pull up. We're going to hold him for you. You know, that won't happen because he's a nobody. Now, let me tell you another story about a fake alpha male. Now, you must understand this. There are those who have no power and pretend to have power. There are those who have power. You might not be able to tell that they have power. 
And then there are those who have power and it's obvious, right? There's kind of these three different situations. Sometimes you might have a power that others don't know about and you could exercise the power or you could hold on to it. It is the wisdom of time and masculinity that helps you make the right decision. Let me tell you of a story. I was in New Orleans. I had some business affairs there and I also had some fun as well. And there are two lessons I want to give you. The first lesson is of, I'll do it in reverse order because relate to what I just said. The first lesson is of a fake alpha male. So my business affairs were very challenging and I needed more time to work on them. I missed two flights. I had two flights scheduled to go back to Las Vegas. I missed the first one due to business. And the second one I missed because there was so much traffic for Mardi Gras, I couldn't get back to the airport in time. So then I had my third opportunity. I finally get to the airport and I was ready to go home. Business had been very challenging. I get on the airplane. It was a frontier flight of all flights. And that's because when you're trying to leave Mardi Gras, it's highly populated, people coming in and out, everything's booked up. Here I am on Frontier, which Frontier and Spirit Airlines, I, I just really do not ever want to be on those airlines. And the primary reason for that is because you have a lot, a concentration of lower class people. Lower class people are lower class for a reason. They're poor because of their poor thinking, because their lack of morals, because their lack of activity and ambition. These are not people I want to be around. I don't want to communicate with them. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to smell them. So here I am on a frontier flight. You still have to wear your mask at this point. So I, I walk into the flight. I have a neck gaiter on. I actually have a man and, man and woman brand.com neck gaiter on. So I walk onto the flight. I sit down in my seat, which was an aisle seat. I pull up my neck gaiter. And I pull down my hat and I try to go to sleep at an mdblabel.com hat, the white one. And, you know, it's uncomfortable because these seats don't recline. I paid the extra money to get the exit row, but still there's not a ton of leg space and the seats don't recline. So it's, it's uncomfortable. So I move around a little bit trying to find a comfort and I try to knock out. Then eventually I, I hear the guy next to me babbling. Now, mind you, I didn't even look at him when I came to sit down. I can smell testosterone and he didn't exist to me. He didn't have any testosterone and everyone on this flight's broke anyway. So I don't want to shake hands. I don't want to meet anyone. I don't even want to make eye contact. I just want to fly home and get off of here. So then I hear some babbling. I don't even like really know what he's babbling about. It sounds like he's babbling to his broad to his left. So he's babbling for like 20 seconds in my head. I'm thinking, man, I wish this guy would shut up. He's babbling something about like, oh, so social distancing, distancing don't apply no more. Like I'm no, I got a social distance, but don't nobody else got a social, something like that. I'm just wondering like, what is this dude talking about? And his female's not even replying to him at all. I'm thinking, I wish this, I hope this poor person just shuts up sometime soon. So anyways, my eyes are closed, neck gaiters up, hats down. And then eventually like he like says something to me and then I pull down my, my neck gaiter and I pull my hat up. I was like, what's up? He's like, you keep bumping me. He's like, you sit down, like you slap your leg on mine. Your legs are wide open. You keep on moving your elbow. I mean, you're bumping me. Now, mind you, I'm a reasonable man. And as I tell you, always offer gold, platinum first. Approach people civilly, respectfully. So I say to him, oh, okay, well, I apologize. You want me to make sure I don't break this plane here? That, is that your issue? And he keeps babbling. It's like he didn't hear anything that I said. He keeps babbling. Like, yeah, you, you think every, you think you got to be comfortable? Can't nobody else be comfortable? You know, you all up on me. You're supposed to be social distancing. He keeps babbling. And I, I'm trying to figure out how we can solve the situation so I can get some sleep. But he keeps babbling. I could tell that he's not hearing me, has no interest in solving the situation, which is common among poor people. Poor people have poor thinking. They're not linear. They're not trying to move forward. And as I tell you, saints, you're part of the leadership class. One of the key traits of being masculine is to be a leader. Leaders lead you to solutions. They help you make progress. So I can see that this, this guy's babbling. And then so um, he keeps babbling, and I don't find that there's a solution. So I just disregard him. again. I put my neck gator, I put my hat back down. He's still babbling. He's still babbling. He's like, what, do, I, do I need to switch with her? Do I need to put her here and then like me switch over there? Is that going to be better for you? And then so I pull my neck gator down, pull my hat back up. I said, he's like, is that what you want? I was like, you know, it doesn't matter to me, but yeah, I mean, we both have wide shoulders. If you'd like to switch with her, yeah, feel free. Go ahead. 
And the funny thing is I'm such a reasonable guy. I'm dead calm that I'm literally answering his question. Like it's a question, like it's a real question, but he's venting. He, he's like acting like a broad, like, you know, sometimes women will vent to you, but they don't actually want a solution. They don't want you to solve a problem. They just want you to listen because they're mad. They're emotional. So he's venting like a broad and I'm just actually answering his question. So yeah, man, if you want to move and switch your girl over here, yeah, feel free. Doesn't matter, matter to me. So he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to vent about it. So then I put my neck gator back up. I put my hat back. I try to get some more sleep. He's still talking. So he said, like, he's like, this is going to be a long flight. You know, this is going to be a long flight. This is going to be an easy flight. And then in my head, I, I say to myself, okay, now here we have a couple options. Option one, I could black out and knock his lights out on this airplane, which probably has a lot of implications in federal law. And more importantly than that, I'm not going to make it home. I'm not going to make it back to Las Vegas. And I've already missed two flights. The one thing I want is to get home. So that's option one. I, I punch him out. And then I'm also going to punch out his girl. If I punch him out, I'm punching his girl out. Saints, that's a riddle. Why is it that if I punch him out, I'm also going to punch his girl out? Tell me why you think that is. I'm just curious if you guys are picking up. That's a riddle for you. I could punch him out, go out in handcuffs, be locked up for a little bit in a New Orleans jail, and then have to have somebody come get me out. Then I can fly back to, to Vegas. And then I'll have a case to deal with and probably a couple of felonies. And then I'll probably be on the news or on TMZ. Uh, the Saint in the Center punched out a man and a woman. <laughs> Shout out to man and woman brand. You dig? We giving these hands out equally. Uh, so that's option one. I could punch him out. Option two is I could just sit here and listen to him babble for four hours. I just sit here, listen to this man babble for four hours because I've already rightly estimated him that he's not going to do anything. You see, because people who are going to do something, they do something. They don't keep talking all this time. And then option three, I could change seats. Now, mind you, remember, this is the third flight I've been trying to get on, and this is Mardi Gras, so presumably the flight is full. So then I, in my head, I say, okay, what's the best chess move? One, I, I might just snap, black out, and beat the snot out of him. It might happen. If that's going to happen, what's the best case scenario for me to set the foundation for that, which is to say where I'm less likely to go down for the felony? So I go ahead and click the, the button, the call flight attendant button, and the flight attendant comes over and she says, how may I help you? And he's still babbling. Like this guy had not stopped babbling the whole time. And I say, oh, the gentleman right here, apparently I've bumped into him and he's probably right. You know, I tend to open my legs wide and I was moving around. I, I bumped into him. He's, he's very angry. Would you mind reseating me somewhere else? And then she says, well, we're about to take off, so I can't reseat you right now. I say, okay, no problem. And he's, he's yelling at this point. He's still yelling. He's yelling at her. He's just yelling in general. And then I say, oh, no problem. I just want to let you know before it escalates. And I wanted to give her those two pieces because, number one, strategically, if I've asked you and you work for Spirit Airlines and you didn't reseat me and I told you that he's angry and it's potentially a problem that's going to escalate, we might even have an opportunity to file a civil case against Spirit Airlines if something pops off because I told you I was in an unsafe situation. And then number two, I said, well, I just want to let you know before it escalates, but most importantly, how I said it. I was dead calm. Like it was inhuman how calm I was while sitting next to someone who's irate. Inhuman. And since I set that foundation of when she walked away, if I would have blacked out and punched this guy out and then punched out his girl, no one would know who threw the first punch because one, it would have been very swift. And number two, no one would be able to see it because we're all, we're all in rows. We're all looking ahead. We're in an airplane. No one would have saw who threw the first punch. But if I did and the authorities asked her, hey, what happened? She said, well, you know, someone pressed the call attendant button. And I came and it was a, a gentleman dressed neatly. It was very calm. And he said that he wanted to be reseated. He said the guy next to him was angry. And the guy next to him was irate and he was yelling and cursing so i'm guessing that that guy started it that's, that's all you can infer so i set up that good foundation right and i knew this guy wasn't going to do anything worst case scenario i just lost it black out and sock him out and then sock out his girl did anyone figure out why i would have to sock his girl out so there's there were a couple guesses okay we have someone said she'll start yelling and cause attention no witnesses nope someone else said so they can both asleep Someone else said, so his girl can realize he's an inadequate fool that can't defend her. 
Nope. Because lower class ignorant men equals lower class ignorant women. That is true. That's correct. And here's the wisdom. And you're always playing chess as a man. Children and women, they can think one, two, but you got to think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got to look at all of the possible outcomes and play chess. Here's the thing. He's obviously a lower class ghetto individual. And birds of a feather flock together. And I know ghetto people. So when I sock him out, now, mind you, I think him and her had gotten into an argument, which is probably why he was lit before I even arrived. Because the whole time he was babbling, she never replied to him. She was basically, I didn't even look to look at her, but she never said anything back. So it was like a monologue of him babbling. And he wasn't even looking at me. He was just looking forward babbling. It was crazy. But anyways, birds of a feather flock together. So if he's a lower class ghetto individual, she is too. And one thing I know about ghetto girls is they think that they can fight men. So as soon as I would have punched him out, even if she didn't want to do anything, she would have been collateral damage just because we're in very close quarters. But also she would have started swinging. As soon as I was knocking him out, she would have started swinging. So strategically, I would have known as soon as I put him to bed, I would have had to put her to bed too. Because it's not like he was going to just be like out noodle and she was going to be like, oh, that's okay. No, she was going to start swinging. So I'm going to have to put her down too. Those are the things you have to calculate. Those are the things that keep you safe and allow you to thrive. If you've read my book, The Black Box, I forget the title of the chapter at the moment, but there's one chapter where I describe a situation wherein uh, basically a fake alpha male, he was like, this. his girl chose me, you dig? His girl chose a pimp and his girl basically came up and said, hey, you the one. And I said, I accept your application. And he got emotional over it. And then he caused the situation. And then, you know, I took the aggressive move to to strike first, make the first aggression, because that's how I really am. And he was deep. I was just there with one of the homies, you feel me? He was there with like seven Samoans. And they basically tried to jump me. And long story short, I did eat one Scooby snack, but I actually made it out of the situation alive and healthy and told a story about it right after and laughed about it because I had looked at the whole chessboard before everything popped off and I already knew what moves I was going to make. So when things popped off, I made the appropriate moves. If you know the name of that chapter, shout it out. You dig. But long story short, um, eventually the stewardess came back and she said, oh, we can actually move you right now. I found a spot. This whole plane is packed. And I felt like this was a spiritual thing because I didn't expect her to find a spot. To be honest with you, I thought the plane was completely full. And what I really was expecting was that, A, she was going to check, not find a spot. She's going to say, hey, I can't find a spot. And I was just like, okay, I'll stay here. No problem. I just want you to know that this guy's really angry and I'm just trying to stay calm here. I was trying to set that up so that if anything popped off and if it was going to pop off, I was going to strike first. That it looked like I was defending myself or I was the innocent party. But she actually found a seat. She came back. She's like, yeah, here, here's a seat. And I went and it was actually like a reasonably civil young guy. And a, an empty seat in between. And I got a window seat. It was great. It was a perfect upgrade. Now, let me give you some context on this. A lot of people who know me would have, in that situation, if they would have been there just nearby and they would have saw that situation, they'd be like, oh my goodness, Marquette is about to go to jail because this is, he's not about to stand for this. He's about to go catch a case. He's not going to let this slide. And, eh. Uh, that, that's true at a small level because one thing about me, I always ask myself right now, what are my goals? My goal is to get home to Las Vegas. Socking him out does not help any of my goals, but more importantly, socking him out is going to catch me federal charges. <laughs> I'm about to be taken back off of this plane in cuffs. And it's just going to be, I'm going to be on TMZ for beating up a girl as well. It, none of this is necessary. What I want you to observe is this lesson in mentality. I could have been the big bad wolf. When he's doing all that, like, you know, like you suppose you think only you supposed to be comfortable. I could have been a big bad wolf and started arguing back with him. I could have started like babbling back with him like a broad. But then I would look like a broad and no one from the outside would have known who was right. They would just saw two ignorant people arguing. Further, I could have physically assaulted him, but then that would have landed me in a bad situation, hurt my money game. Wouldn't have hurt his because he's already broke. Third piece. Why am I going to hold on to this seat, which has no value, when I could literally just move to another seat, whole situation is over. The moral of the story is this. Sometimes not fighting the battle is the best thing to do. 
I end up in a whole nother seat that was way more roomy, closer to the front, more comfortable, and I didn't have to deal with the stewardess walking by, bumping my shoulder the whole flight. Much better outcome. But you know what people do when they're low class in their ghetto? They always want to struggle. They would have stayed in that seat like, I ain't going nowhere. Or they would have started arguing with them, like going back and forth, choosing to engage in struggle when you could have easily removed yourself from the situation as a civilized person. Do not beef with poor people. They're beneath you. Treat them as such. Get away from them. Corey Dollar had said chapter 42, getting square. Chapter 42, getting square. You dig? We have Daniel said, bought the book, just came in, excited to read it. I promise you it's the most entertaining book you've ever read. I wrote it like a movie. I lived it like a movie indeed. Truly. Talk to me. Michael said, peace to the saints. Ever since watching your show, I've learned so much. Got into a boxing gym and I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. Thanks. And, and I know he copped the snow bunnies and so did I. Oh, got the snow bunny 4000s. Yeah. Playerism. And let me tell you guys a funny story too. Now, while this guy is babbling all this stuff, he just got back from Mardi Gras, right? So he'd been drinking for five days and five nights and partying and staying up late. He'd been Mardi Gras. I've been working. I've been working and exercising every day. When he was babbling all this stuff, he's like, yeah, and I know you ain't with the shits. Like, you don't look like you with the shits. And that's how I knew in his mind, he thought he had rightly assessed me. Number one, I'm extremely with the shits. I'm so with the shits, I'm not going to babble with you. That's how with the shits I am that I'm not going to babble with you. And then number two, like it turns out, actually, I do throw hands. Actually, I, I throw hands with professional boxers, and I've been doing that for years. So the likelihood that I can't put you down is minimal. Like I can for sure put you down, little buddy, because number one, we're the same size. And number two, you're not a trained fighter. And number three, even if I've never boxed a day in my life, and even if you were bigger, you're still going to get put down because you're a hoe. And I'm a goon and I got a lot of practice at this. You dig in the ring and out of the ring. So that's how I could tell in his mentality. He had not even rightly assessed me. And it was actually scary what could have happened to him. And he didn't even have the foggiest idea of who he was sitting next to or what the person's capable, capable of. And it's a funny thing. And that's why just like my OGs told me, like when you're in jail, you don't know who you're dealing with. Anybody in there could be a killer. And he didn't have any idea of who he was dealing with. Now, Switch the situation, change the environment. Say we're at a bus stop, exact same situation. I walk up at the bus stop, I sit down next to him and then eventually he starts babbling. He's like, you bumping into me. I would have reacted the same way. Oh, I apologize. Cause truth be told, I probably was bumping into him. Your boy opened his legs super wide. I probably I probably bullied his arm off the, the armrest just cause that's how I'm living. That's how I'm feeling. You heard me like, I'm not even doing it on purpose. I just live big. So if that would have happened at a bus stop, he'd have said the same thing. I would apologize. Why? Because a man is not a liar. We don't tell big lies. We don't tell small lies. We don't tell white lies. Integrity. I would have apologized because I was wrong. Yeah, I apologize. Like, did I break the plane? Am I on your side? I'm sorry. Like, I'll stay on my side. That's real talk. Even if you have more power, that doesn't mean you, you try to stunt and bully somebody. No, nah, I apologize. I would have apologized. And then if he would have escalated it in, at a bus stop where we're out in the world, I would have needed that fade. I'd have took off on him. Bing, bing, bing. It'd have been a wrap. You dig? Then I'd have probably just jogged to my destination, you know, rather than wait for that bus after that. But there's a time and place for everything. And even when he was doing all that babbling, saying, you ain't with the shits. Like, I could have said, well, no, actually I am. Or actually, like, bro, I throw hands all the time. But none of that was necessary. So you have to know when to keep your mouth closed. You have to know when to play certain cards. So I want you guys to remember that because being a man is not about being the tough guy. It's not about being right. It's not about pumping your chest out because I want you guys to remember that will get you killed sometimes. I got a, I have a couple of good friends who end up getting killed doing things like that. We have Karu said tuition. He followed up with another super chat for his guests on why you had to knock the girl out too. He said okay. puncher for association or for not stopping him. Matthew Wilson said, first time paying tuition, don't have much, but had to respect the game and wisdom mm -hmm. I've been soaking up. Piece of the saints. Little Cash Kid said, when you wipe out your enemy, you wipe out everyone in association That's with right. them. That way, no one can come back for revenge. Master strategist. There's much truth to that. Technique said, tuition. One mic at a time said, just order the black box. Top notch wisdom. Yes, sir. Corey Dollarhide said, peace to the saints. Truly appreciate your consistent wisdom. You inspire me to become remarkable. Much love. Peace to the saints. 
Ahmed said, question. I live in NYC and I notice I don't have any good experiences with black women in uh -oh. the hood. Uh -oh. Outside of the hood hood experiences, why do you think? Also, I same with my same with women my age. I attract older. Well, the older women are easier to capture because they have fewer options. They're like a, a stock. Uh, they're like a stock where the the CEO has been exposed for being a liar and they're cooking the books. So that stock has no value. No one's going to buy it. Um, same thing with older women. The stock has no value. That's why no one else wants it. So now they have to go out and hunt, which is unlike the younger woman who's being hunted. So when you say you do better with older women, that you're probably a good looking guy you know, got your, your basics together and they're like, Oh, you know, here's an opportunity. And so they're like blood suckers. And I know a lot of young men within the SAS and I talked to in the consultations and they end up dealing with these older women because it's easy. And I want to encourage you not to go for what's easy in life. It's okay to go ahead and beat them down every now and then. Um, but definitely don't think that you're about to stay in a relationship with them. Cause remember if somebody else passed on them, there's probably a reason for that. Now with regards to African-American women in the hood, as you put it, which I uh, surmise you're referring to those who are found in ghettos or low-income areas. Women in low-income areas in general are unpleasant to be around. They're not civilized. They don't have good values. So I try to avoid them as much as you can. I actually have a video called Why You Should Date Rich Women. Moreover, the African-American woman comes from an ethnicity wherein the culture definitely has not instilled respect for patriarchy or male lead. And so you have to be very thoughtful about the ones that you deal with and you have to apply a lot of game if they're willing to learn. We have Omorka sent $20 said, how do you remain calm in those situations? Whenever something like that happens to me, I start to feel annoyed and my blood begins to boil. I'm not going to lie to you. Initially, my blood was very much so boiling. And then I realized that, you know, there's a couple ways I can play this because I'm bigger than this situation. You see, like for him, this might be the highlight of his year. You know, getting beat up by me might be the highlight of his year. But me beating him up would be the low light of my year. Even if I won the fight, I still lose you know, cause I'm hurting my money. I'm going to be behind bars. I, I can't earn. Then I got to go ahead and throw out 80,000 just for the lawyer to Rodney King the case. You feel me? Beat the case down. And then I potentially get bad uh, publicity cause I'm beating up a female. We know how people look upon female beaters. And I guarantee you, if I raised a hand to him, I was going to definitely beat that broad down. There's no doubt about that. That's just how it had to go. Um, so in those cases, you have to let the cooler head prevail. And remember that we're not playing connect four out here. We're not playing hopscotch. We playing chess. And as a chess master, you're a chess master because you're rational. Huh? You know, let them play hopscotch, connect four, connect the dots and all that other stuff. We got to remain as chess masters out here. And that's why you get paid the big bucks because you, you think up here, you, you live in here. You master the psychology of others. You don't let them master your psychology. That's why you get the big bucks. We have Isaiah came in and he bought the floral joggers that are going out. He bought the Smart. floral shorts that I really like. The blue ones? Yeah. Those are the ones I like too. He bought the gray joggers also. So I guess he bought the black and the gray and the snow bunnies. Oh, he got the black ones with the red band. No, the black floral. Oh, the like. black and blue ones. Yeah, yeah black and blue floral. Picture, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, those are cold. We have Michael bought the snow bunny 4000s. Let's go. And then Aaron bought boxing shoes. Snow bunny faux K's in the building. You dig. Okay. OD said, peace to the saints. Thank you for doing what you do, Marquette. Peace to the saints. Danny Garcia said, just graduated from UC Berkeley and wow. coming from Pasadena. You what? inspire me to better myself. Thank what? you. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, where'd you go to high school at, Playboy? Um, and it's you know really fascinating because he's walked in the same places I've walked. You know, I'm from Pasadena. I went to Berkeley as well. So, and he just graduated. So that's big. Congratulations to you, Saint. Kid Cool sent tuition. Peace of the Saints. Ahmed said, sorry, I was typing fast. LOL. Thank you for your wisdom. I'm 23. I asked my close friends why they think that I have bad experience with them. And he told me I'm not dysfunctional enough. That hit me. Ooh, that's sad. And you know what? <laughs> when you see people in big groups, whether it's guys or girls, these are generally lower IQ people. You know, high intelligence people tend to be a little more introverted. They tend to have higher standards. And because you have higher standards, it's harder to exist within groups because groups are difficult to manage. Like even when we're arranging to go out to dinner, 
one person's late, one person can't eat at this particular restaurant, one person is not interesting to talk to or they're too loud or they drink too much. So intelligent people with high standards tend to find it harder to be within groups, especially if they're not managing or leading the group. So we tend to be unto ourselves or be in smaller groups. So this makes perfect sense. And what you really should do rather than looking at him and thinking like, oh, you're a dirtbag, you should start looking at yourself and say like, God damn, how could I have hung around a dirtbag for so long? And then go ahead and find better relationships. And one thing you should know as a man, we generally build our bonds with those we work with. That's just the nature of maleness. Whereas a female, I've seen it happen many times. A chick will walk into the bathroom with another chick like, oh, I like your nails. Oh, your hair is so pretty. Next thing you know, you're, they're friends on the basis of what? superficiality of appearance. Where'd you get your hair done? Like the superficiality of things that are irrelevant. They become friends based on that. Whereas men become friends based on, oh, we're in the same industry or, oh, you, you can teach me how to sell stock or buy property. That's how we build bond, building together. William sent $20. He said, drove a guy today at around 2 a.m. Dude knocked his head while entering the car, complains the whole ride. <laughs> Drop him off. He slams my door, roll down my window, and we have a death stare. Without a word, and he left. I was ready. Yeah, that dude's a clown, and he, he's super feminine. And that's the mark of an a immature person because they can't get over small things. You see, he hit his head when he got in the door. That was his fault. Even if it wasn't, it's irrelevant, and it's in the past. A real man would have said, okay, next, carrying on. But an immature person, like a child, they hold on to these things. Similarly, you'll notice that women, if you ever curse them or say something negative to them, you ever see how good their memory is? They hold on to it. If you cheat on them and they say they forgave you, they didn't. They're holding on to that, even if they let you maintain the relationship and they're going to bring it back up a thousand more times. They can't get past it. That is the mark of someone who's high level is that they can control the mind enough to make the mind do what they want it to do. But most people, the mind is controlling them. I'm caught up. Fantastic. So you got my first story. Here's my second story from New Orleans. So Mardi Gras is going on. During the time I was there for maybe five nights, four nights, I think I spent a total of two and a half, three hours doing Mardi Gras stuff. And the only way they lured me there, free food. They had free food, which I always appreciate. Got some home-cooked New Orleans food. It was actually pretty good. But I'm staying on a balcony, and I noticed something very noteworthy. There were uh, women walking by. Now, mind you, if you want to go for the titties, it's very disappointing. There, are, Maybe you see one set of titties per hour. It's just like, what is this? This is a scam. This is not what I remember seeing on those infomercials for Girls Gone Wild. I remember a lot more titties than this. So that must have been staged. But anyways, so you're on the balconies and you're throwing the beads out to the girls who are walking by and they're like reaching up, like, throw me some beads. Now, most of them are not showing anything. You're just throwing them beads for the fun of it, which I found to be not very entertaining or engaging. As a capitalist and a producer, I find that so much of what's going on in the world is a direct result of people like me, business people who try to create a culture around something so either we can make profit or we can decide how things go and achieve our end. So for example, can we not all agree that Mardi Gras probably was a creation of men? The idea of showing your breasts to get something Men had to have think of, thought of that. There's no way that a woman thought that was a good idea. But we create that and we create the gamified experience where it's fun and they feel like they're achieving something, having a good time. And we've done all of this, create this whole event so we could see some titties. That's how we are. You know, we, we, we do this magic for them. What I notice is as I'm looking down from this high point of the balcony and all these drunk people are sloshing through and most of the women are like, hey, you're throwing them beads. There was a lot of guys who were there thinking that they were funny, like pulling up their shirt, like trying to get beads. There's even one time I threw some beads to a woman and she caught him and a guy caught him at the same time and he thought I was throwing the beads to him. And in my mind, I was like, you dizzy motherfucker, like what is wrong with you that you're even down there participating in the activities that are designated for the female? What is wrong with you that you're so goofy you think it's funny to engage in the behaviors of a harlot female? And that shows you how lost the world is to where guys think that that's a cool thing to do. 
and where guys are expecting other guys to engage them the way they engage a female. There were guys on the balcony throwing beads to other guys. And I was just like, what is this? It's goofiness. Only men who are not men, males who are not serious, would go by and do something like that. It's degrading and it's foolish. And in that moment, I was like, ooh, these guys are lost. These are the guys that if I ever take over, these guys need to be enslaved. I'm going to have you out there picking cotton. You hear me? Because y'all are useless. Ahmed came back with his third ten dollars. He said, "Wisdom is too valuable. Thank you, and peace to the saints." Peace to the saints. Now, summary of that one before I go into my lecture is that: do not ever take on the behaviors of a woman. Do not ever behave as a jester. Do not ever engage in mindless behavior that is antithetical to what a man is. I hope all those guys get uh, locked up and treated like a woman in jail, if you know what I mean. Carrying on. A man is known by his goals and deeds. You cannot be a leader unless you're going somewhere. You don't know where you're going and you're not going anywhere in particular unless you have goals. If you were watching the show recently, there were some young ladies and I said, what are your goals in the areas of health, wealth, and relationships? First, tell me about wealth. What are your financial goals? They all seem to be at a loss for words and their goals are really fuzzy. And I can't look down on them for that because I don't really expect women to have very sharp, well-defined, deadline-based goals. I don't expect that. And they rarely have that. And that's why they rarely achieve much. Best they can do is find a guy who does have a good financial goal who's achieving it. They call that a provider. huh? So women, they don't necessarily have to have goals. When I asked them, they said that, oh, my goal is to be stable. Damn, that's really low. Shouldn't everyone be stable anyways? Like, Agree. <laughs> Precisely. If you're going to speak, you got to speak closer to the mic. And then secondly, another one's goal is like, I'm really trying to be a millionaire. Like, okay. Um, I don't believe you though. Because when you state it like that, it doesn't sound serious. And to become a millionaire, that's a serious affair. And then the third one, we asked her her goal. She seemed like she was thinking. She seemed, <laughs> like her brain was on loading. And that's not surprising because that just reveals that they hadn't thought strategically about it. And that's a clear indication that there's no real goal. But here's the sad part. That's okay for a woman. That's not sad. That's okay for a woman. The sad part is that there's a lot of men that if I said, what's your financial goal? They don't have one. Then they wonder why they're broke. And then they get mad when women want a provider and they can't provide. Well, it's like, bruh, don't get mad at them about, don't get mad at them for expecting something basic. You should be mad at yourself for not being able to achieve something basic. Shorty says she want to be stable. If you're a man that cannot provide stability, which is a basic, that's not, that's not Rolls Royce. That's, that's Toyota. She just wants stability. You can't provide that. Use a bum. You don't deserve a woman. Huh? Now, further, a man should have goals in wealth, health, and relationships. One way I'm going to help you guys with that, if you remember at patreon.com slash the saint in the center or marquetism.com, tomorrow, 9 a.m., we're talking about goals. We're having a work session. We're going to talk about some goals. We're also going to take that time to where you can just work at your computer or wherever you do to make some progress. Another thing that I really want you guys to remember this, men don't major in minor things. Men don't major in minor things, which is to say when we're allocating our time as a masculine man, we're not dealing with things that are irrelevant. Let me ask you guys a question. My nails, is it relevant how my nails look right now? My toenails and my fingernails is irrelevant. Has nothing to do with my goals. That's a minor thing how my nails look, but to women, that's a major thing. Women major in minor things. How's my hair look? How's my nails look? Take a picture for me. Oh, that doesn't look good. Take 10 20, 30 of them more. Oh, that doesn't look good. Take 30 more. They major in minor things. Their actual focus in life due to not having any real goals is focused on things that are minor, meaning irrelevant. How do my nails look? How's my hair look? All those things. Men don't major in minor things. That's why we're comfortable being bald head, fat, stupid, and ugly. Because if we can be bald head, fat, stupid, and ugly while still securing the bag and still achieving other blue chip goals, we'll do it because we're majoring in major things. Now, mind you, that was just a bit of a hyperbole so you understand. Do not become overweight for that is 
bile and in a male becoming overweight, you become more like a female. You have more fat tissue, less testosterone, and you will have some titties. Carrying on. I want you to realize, and this is for men and women, know that everyone is their own boss. You might say, Mark, what are you talking about? I work at Walmart and I have a manager at Walmart. He tells me what to do. You might have a manager at Walmart, but everyone is their own boss. None of you are slaves. Any one of you could walk out of that job today. Any one of you can choose what you do tomorrow. We are all our own boss. If you show up to your job tomorrow, that's because you bossed yourself and told yourself to go. We are all our own boss. As a man, you really know that and you take responsibility for that reality. So what I ask you is this, as your own boss, are you choosing your assignments or are you accepting your assignments? When I say choosing, when you wake up, do you say, I'm going to create a a to-do list or more intelligently, if I'm one of the saints following the ism, I'm going to refine the to-do list I made last night before bed. And I'm going to live my life today based on this to-do list. And this to-do list adds up to exciting goals in the areas of health, wealth, and uh, relationships. See, that's you choosing your assignments. If you wake up today and then you just pick up the phone and you reply to whoever messaged you, they, they decided your assignment. You're replying to them because they messaged. They decided what you're about to do. When I pick up my phone, I don't reply to everyone who messaged me. I don't reply to anybody. I pick up my phone to send out messages. And if it just so happens that when I pick up the phone to send out a message, you sent me a message, I will reply. But I'm choosing my assignments because my time is precious and I'm hyper-focused on my goals. And I realize that I am my own boss, so I am choosing what to do on a regular basis. Talk to me. Drug Hour said, Marquette, I feel you on that poor people mentality. I will literally eat at a nice pasta place in my area daily with great service before I eat at Applebee's with loud, ignorant people and lazy service. Ain't it crazy, too? The service is what kills me when you go to those places. Because they're used to dealing with lower class people and lower class people have low standards, it's like they just don't show you any respect. And if they mess up your order, they're like comfortable with that. Sadly, you can't go through a drive through and tell them like, okay, I want no onions, remove the mayo, add mustard. They can't get that right. It's hard. So that basic thing, they can't get right. They have one job. We have CJ Bailey sent $20. He said, I wish I knew this wisdom while growing up without a male figure. In high school, I got involved with gang activities and selling drugs. Luckily, I went to the military route before any serious corrective actions. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. The military route has been very good for many people. I have a lot of friends and family who are in the military, and it served them very well, and it provides great retirement opportunities. And if you don't plan to retire within the military, I encourage you to get some transferable skills while you're in it. I'm happy to hear that you rose above those circumstances. Two questions that an executive always ask himself. When I say executive, I'm talking about like a leader of a corporation, but every man should be the executive in his household if nowhere else. You should always ask yourself, is this worth doing? Meaning what I'm about to do, is it worth my time? This is not a question women ask because damn, I mean, it seems like they got an infinite amount of time. They have some long conversations. You ever listen to them tell a story and be like, God damn, where's the punchline? Where's this story going? When does it end? When does it end? They got time. It's like they're immortal out here but you don't have time. Okay. So, uh, when you're about to do something, ask yourself, is this worth doing full stop? Second question is if it is worth doing, how can I have someone else do it? A competent professional, because you should be leveraging your genius for activities that require genius. Anything else that you can outsource, you should outsource. And if it's beyond your skill set or expertise, you should give it to someone else who's better at it. The saint that asked me earlier, hey, Mark, how do I become better at marketing a service-based business? Well, if you're the one giving the service, giving the service is your business. So you shouldn't try to become a marketing guru. Find someone who is, pay them to do that, and then you'll get more leads into your service business. And if you do a good job in providing service, the machine is going to work beautifully but don't get outside of your lane we have Karu. he said i'm finally starting to write out my goals and ideas i want to thank you sincerely for inspiring me you're very welcome and that will be the seed to your success and people may be saying to themselves marquette why are you waking up super early to show us what stocks you're investing in i'm not trying to give you stock advice i'm trying to build a habit in you i'm trying to show you how the habit looks and if you over the year, spend $200 on stock and you never bought stock before, we've created a behavior that's one that leads to wealth. And that's what I'm trying to do for you. And so I'm happy that you start writing down your goals because when you actually engage in life change, you will see the fruits as I'm sure you have. 
Here's a golden nugget. Be suspicious of female advice. You might say, Mark, what are you talking about, bro? You cold-blooded. You're right, I am cold-blooded. And the reason I say that is twofold. Number one, you should be suspicious of female advice because anytime you hear something from them, you have to, we're talking about your, your woman, you have to acknowledge the fact that this is coming from someone I'm romantically involved with. So anything she says is going to consider first and foremost how this affects my relationship with her. So always keep that in the front of your mind that even though she thinks she's being objective, it's impossible for her. So she's taking into consideration your re re uh, romantic relationship when she gives you advice. Second thing to be conscious of is that females are fear-based animals. Human beings in general are fear-based, but females more so. You might think, no, my girl ain't scared of nothing. Oh, she is. You see, because the female is a smaller, weaker animal, and they're merely projecting strength. It is an illusion. So being that the female, similar to the male, is a fear-based animal, but at a higher level, when they give you advice, it's often like, oh, did you know you, you could go to jail for that, or you, you're breaking the law, or that's against the rules. Females tend to respect the rules more. Men who become great men tend to have to break the rules or bend the rules or create their own rules, which is why if you're trying to get to the mountaintop, you cannot rely on a female to give you good advice to get you to the mountaintop because she's never been there. She doesn't know how to lead the path there, and she's not a savage enough to, to get the job done. So don't look to her to lead you. That would be foolish, and that will lead you in circles. You caught up? Fantastic. Saints, I will give you some time to hit that like button and as well to send in your thoughts, questions, comments, tuition as we wind down. Oh, yeah. One thing I did want to announce, uh, just so you guys don't, don't feel like it just slipped by you. I use these uh, actually as wallets. These are pretty cool. You can use the clip part for your cash. And then on the inside, you can put in your credit cards, bank cards, et cetera. This is actually the last, this is the last one, right? Yes. And do you know what the price is? Yes, it is. Hold on one second. I mentioned it. Okay. Whenever she tells us the price, uh, whoever cash apps first has that one. I just want to let you guys know because I realized it was the last one. And obviously, we won't be bringing any more total was shipping $24.99. $24.99. So first person to send $24.99 uh, to cash tag Marquette. We'll secure that one. And I like it because it's slick. You feel me? I like, I like slick things. And also, one thing you'll know is that this is mine right here. Also, one thing you'll know is that, you know, these are those small things that catch a woman's eye. You know, uh, when you look at a P, the reason people respect a P is number one, you can do what most squares can't, which is to have multiple women accept each other. But more importantly, with regards to this conversation, um, it's, it's that little bit of sauce that he has. You know, he does everything just a little bit different than a square. You know, a square might have like a whole big, big old brown leather wallet. They got to sit to the side because they got so much stuff in it. And the P, you know, we travel a lot. We got a little bit of cash, got a couple cards, you heard me. And it's sleek James Bond style stuff like that that you know, really makes an impact. So you always got to take care of those details. Yes, Simon said, can one have too many goals? Feel like I have to improve in so many areas. No, let's keep it simple. You know, work on the most important thing. What is the most important financial goal? What is the most important health goal? What is the most important relationship goal? And always consider that that relationship goal is kind of under these two things. Your relationship goal should align with your financial goal. Your relationship goal should be in line with your health goal, which is to say it wouldn't make sense for you to build relationships with people who are overweight if, you're if your fitness goal is to lose weight. It wouldn't make sense to build a relationship goal for you know, meeting this one girl that lives next door to you if she's broke, deaf, and dumb when you're trying to become wealthier. So that one is kind of underlying the two big ones of wealth and health. Cheddar said, I appreciate your knowledge. Peace to the saints. He sent $20. Peace to the saints. Damien said, thank you, Marquette, for the invaluable wisdom. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And I'm caught up. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Saints, let us end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction. 
knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin, I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time. And peace to the saints. We just sold the final wallet. Oh, wallet is sold. Do not send any money, please. And to the person that just sent it, Ulrich, please send your address to support at marquetism.com. Support at marquetism.com. Please send your mailing address. We have Ken Martin sent $10. Um, he said, that's not a Rolls Royce. That's a Toyota. Trades and skills, usefulness, and the basics of just being a man. True mm. game as always. Indeed. Peace to the saints.